Kind of like a fun video game. <laughs> Somebody told me my music sounded like Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam Remember and Earl. that game from the early 90s? Now is it like Nintendo action? Uh, it was maybe, yeah, I think so. I don't really remember what happened because I never owned yeah. the game, but I remember the soundtrack being loosely funk based. Nice. <laughs> maybe it's like some subliminal strange influence or something. Funky. But anyway. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. This is Mark Letiri. Hi, friends. Yes, the Grammy Award winner. Oh, shucks. And now uh, Eric Johnson hanger. Hey, we had a hang. Dude, He's how was that? Beautiful soul of a human being. I know, right? Yeah. He seems like it. Yeah, he's really great. Guy. Not intimidating at all. No. Very fr I mean, very friendly. <laughs> no, I mean, jamming. Oh, well, that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what dude. Do you, what do you play after that? That's amazing. But, you guys had, like, the uh, all-star shredder event of all time. It was a good one. The so woodshed, who, who all was yeah, there? The Woodshed Guitar Experience was uh, myself, uh, hosted by Andy Wood. So he was right. there, of course. Andy Timmons, Brent Mason, Greg Cock, Seth Rosenblum, and Eric Johnson was special guest. Wow. So a lot of firepower on the on the old six string there. So what I would imagine the uh, tiny chords came into play. You had uh, to play rhythm. I played a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of time. And then I also didn't play at all. No, just saw this sit back <laughs> because, and watch this one. Yeah, when you're on stage with that many guys, you, you don't. Yeah. But I did. I, I There was a, a jam. I, I can't remember what we played, but I, I think I did play a little bit. Yes. You know. So, All right, so anyway. cool. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we we snagged Mark on his way to the airport to go over. We just did a course. It's called uh, Tiny Chords, and it's all about using little chordal fragments to like really accentuate rhythm That's parts. A great way to describe it. Fragments. Yeah. yeah. Fragments. I mean, they're full chords. Yeah. They have all the qualities of the of the notes you want to establish the harmony. But um, I use these uh, in my compositions. I use them as a studio player yeah uh, just stuff that you can use to dress up a chord progression to maybe play in a way that is in a, a specific register that gives a specific tone that stays out of the way of like a more meteor sure chordal part or a keyboard part or something like that so i call them tiny chords because they just generally <laughs> exist on maybe the top three or four strings okay um and it just in my brain you know just feels like they fit in in the cr the nooks and crannies of maybe what you'd want to have in your composition. So. What are like um, if you're gonna take show them like a basic chord and then what you would do to make it a tiny chord. So like if you had a chord progression, and you're like it's A minor or whatever the yeah. chord progression is. Well, the thing we were just doing was just sort of like a basic oh, yeah. kind of probably a good swampy, <laughs> you know, sort of bluesy, funky thing. And it's just two chords: it's A seven and D seven. Now these would be sort of like the bigger chunkier voices that you are totally fine to play on the guitar but mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to play that so really you can just grab two notes okay. that are important and so what i was playing while you were playing these shapes is for my a7 chord i was just playing all the way up here i got my seventh on the bottom keep playing i'm going to focus major. on you Sorry. okay and Go my ahead. major third here on the top so it's tiny it's two two strings two notes and it's light and bright and, you know, depending how you play it, you have a nice snap to it. And so over A, I just basically just re-voiced an A7 to be all the way up. This is pretty simple stuff. I yeah. Probably you might be watching the being going like, well, yeah, but it's important. It just absolutely. Just because it's, it's simple doesn't mean it's not important. So for A7, I did this. For D7, I took the same shape and literally moved it down a half step. Oh, One nice. fret. Boom. Okay. Still tiny, still small, but now what we have here is for D, we have the third on the bottom and the seventh on the top. Okay. So I flipped it around. Yeah. Okay, so we went from A7 to D7. And then if you're playing... Now I can... Now part of this... Maybe I want to... I'll do a little extension there. Add the fourth, right, to get okay. a little sort of suspended kind of sound. The beauty about chords like this is, especially in a kind of music like the funky thing, or sure. and we'll show you uh, some other things, rock based and otherwise. Blues too. I would yeah, we. Yeah. Well, I think the course has like kind well, of pop rock, sort of country funk, a little sort of quasi gospel thing, mm -hmm. like kind of R and B, Motowny thing. So oh yeah. You're gonna. 
you're going to see that the the rhythm of it, the syncopations and stuff like that are really what's going to give these tiny chords the life. Well, and what was really cool about it is, um, you know, there's a, obviously a lot of different tiny chords in each of the tunes, but there's also similarities where you're like, oh, this works over yeah. any genre. And, and you know, the beauty of this stuff is like a lot of it's just triads. Yeah. And, and just playing those triads. You know, right. you've got the chord in there, you've got all the right notes, and you're not using a million fingers. <laughs> well, and the, and the other really great thing that, that he does in there is um, the em embellishments and like how you're able to use, you know, maybe just three notes really effectively, whether it's arpeggiating sure. them or, you know, the rhythm you're applying to them. It's crazy about how many, you know, like I'm saying, some of the chords are very similar from song to song, but it's so different when you switch genres of music. Yeah, it's all about, uh, yeah, kind of how you apply them stylistically. So like, the other thing I wanted to discuss was this, like shapes like this, which are not quite as tiny, but to me, yeah. they still are. So voicing a, a D7 chord like this, which is gonna be pretty cool, it's almost like a ninth chord now. Over D, and then I put the seventh here in the bottom. Still kind of small. I'm using the D string. I think in this course, I don't actually ever use the A or E string. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about just removing them from the guitar altogether. Let's go, Keith Richards. Then I'd have to reset the trim and I don't know. Right. Oh, damn. Time for that. But uh, anyway, so this is a cool maneuver like over D. Oh, wait. I'll get to, I'll get to D. Yeah. So you can... So really the movement involves the B string. So we have this ninth chord. Then we have like a C triad with our E on, or I'm sorry, a D on top. And then this cool little D ninth chord that I'm just gonna slide in and out. So, so uh, that's a okay, little bit. That, that was super yeah, sure. Cool. Something like that. Who's um who's a player that that? Does this really well? Uh, Al McKay, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. Um, Steve Cropper. Uh, oh God. Is it like uh, if I ask you, Wawa like, Watson or uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire? Give me one too. That's really. Um, well, now it's stuck. Uh, see, this is the thing. Is <laughs> really bad with names. Um, or any, any of them. Steve come... Cropper. Any of those guys. Well, uh, actually, if you there is a really cool tiny chord part in uh, Shining Star. Okay. Well, the, the there's like in the intro. So that's kind of like the uh, one part, but then he goes, uh, "Oh, that's right." That sort of kind of thing, and yeah. that would be those are tiny chords. He could have done something like kind of like that if he wanted to. Sure, but I'm not going to tell Al McKay how to play the guitar. Uh, <laughs> Yo, man, you should have done hey, that. Hey, man, again. look at look. Next time you do this, you call me. Pocket's a little loose. <laughs> right, right. Um, but like, I loved hearing all that kind of stuff. Similar uh, vibe to, to uh, with those kind of parts, actually, um, like a from like a "Hang Up Your Hang Ups" okay. Kirby Hancock, which is Wawa Watson on guitar. Um, so there's all this great stuff, and 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 I got a lot of it from kind of R and B funk playing, but mm -hmm. then you hear a lot of it in rock and pop, and um, I mean, heck, uh, the Edge is famous oh, yeah. for the tiny chords and the delay pedal and the delay pedals. So Sorry. they're everywhere, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and the funk stuff, um, since timing and like how long you actually hold the notes. I mean, we go over this in the in the course, but mm. like, it seems like that's such an important part of it. Yeah, and like I, note duration, like whether you're you're almost like uh, syncopating with the drummer sometimes and making really right, short staccato. -y. Right. Yeah. So that's that's something that we will focus on is is syncopation where to feel the chords yes like how it's gonna uh relate to the beat and there are backing tracks that you can play to okay that we have in the course tabs the whole bit tabs the whole thing um but yeah like you're talking about you know duration i could take a tiny chord in e and that's a tiny chord but maybe i don't want to be funky with it because it's not that kind of scene so i just want to make an arpeggio at it Or something like that, like a real pretty kind of sure. piece with you know your delays and all that stuff. So he does a great version of that in the chorus too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and here's the, you know the, the other thing about this is your last chorus was freaking amazing. <laughs> but 
Well, there's a lot in there. So, yeah, and <laughs> some of the playing was like, oh my God, am I ever going to be able to play that? But this yes, is like... Yes, you will be. This, be I know, right? So this one specifically, it's all rhythm. I and, think primarily, yes. And there's it's no like, soloing. This is stuff that you anybody would use at, at a gig, or it's perfect if you're in a two guitar player band, right? Or you know, with you, I mean, God, you got like 45 members, in band <laughs> so I would imagine, sure, you get to really, um, and you know how to do this because you you are in that experience of horns and, mm -hmm. and you know keyboards and yeah, I look at this as as excuse me as guitar orchestration. Yeah, I think I would call it that. Okay, you're given a chord progression. What am I going to play beyond our power chords our bar chords sure our big open chords you okay because we can do those but maybe we don't always want to do those and a lot of times with stuff like this uh it, it, they're great at, for creating hooks like kind of r melodic rhythm hooks you, you know i mean if you were just to play play like c sharp minor and e or something for me. Um, maybe a and b or something maybe you go like uh let's go like this is super pop standard <laughs> you know one six Five, four, one, six, four, five. You've heard it a gazillion times. Just do this. So you can kind of make some kind of look, a little hooky parts. One, two, three. Right? So, yeah, you know, it's just a thing. It's a hook. And those are all little tiny chords. Well, and that's kind of the Triads. next iteration of uh, becoming really good at rhythm is being able to have those little parts that, like, that fill everything out. Sure. Yeah. I love stuff like that. Like, I like, in my records, I'll use them, I'll put them together and I'll put them stereo left, right okay. as sort of like a cool little ear candy kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And I do that on sessions all the time for yeah. people. What, um, yeah, what are some other things, like, uh, are, are there... Um, some typical chords that maybe are a little bit uh, fancier, tiny chords like that you would replace like a G chord or something that you would use. Hmm. Like if you're gonna do like a higher string versions. Of yeah, well, okay, so if you're in G, well actually we kind of- Any key, it doesn't matter, okay. whatever chord. Uh, wait, say, okay, repeat it. Cause now so if G. like, if, instead <laughs> of, if you wanted, if somebody's playing like, yeah. like that kind of a G chord, if they Yeah, okay. And a lot of this, you know, you can take a G major scale, okay. right? And say like, wow, okay, maybe I'll harmonize it. Kind of like this. And we have an exercise that involves these sort of like, I guess they're almost like clean folk. Sure. But you could play, play like, you know, G, C, and D or something like okay. that. Uh, well, I, I, whatever rhythm you'd like. It's gonna get you hired. Uh, hopefully, I don't know. It might get you fired. <laughs> that wasn't the uh, the greatest hook example, but the idea is that could be a solo yep. section right. or another kind of hook. And that was just like harmonizing the G major scale with an open G string. So you know you have uh, what D and B there. So and then you can just go up the per up the scale. Such Oops, cool sorry. Sound. That was a cool sound. Even that. Uh, well. Depending on where your chords are going. So tiny chords. Tiny chords. At. Yeah, man. Sweet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> trial okay. and error. <laughs> I'm gonna leave a. I'm gonna leave a link to the course down below. It's freaking amazing. It's really. It's really cool to see this kind of stuff in action. And you know, Mark never brags on himself when he's here, but like, it's should I start. Way. I don't know. You that should, maybe a little bit. You deserve it. <laughs> but every time he's over, I'm like. Wow, the thing that impresses me the most is just how many different styles of rhythm guitar playing you have cool. on tap. Well. And uh, it, like literally from like Van Halen to funk to country, there's a country one in here too. Kind of, like, yeah, it's a little, little chicken picking. I mean, I, well, I hesitate to call it to say chicken picking, but 
Yeah, there's it's some plucking. It's You're, plucking. It's plucking. Some hybrid-y <laughs> things. Yeah, but anyway, it's groove-based more but, than lead. But I think uh, it's going to give you a solid foundation in in any kind of a style. And if you're creative at all, it's going to be one of those things where you're like, oh wow, this is this is where it's at. This is a th this is a concept that if I'm giving a clinic or something like that, I always get asked about because yeah. I find we get to a point as guitar players are like, well, I know the chords. Sure. What else can I do with these chords? You know, and I know my G major scale, for example. It's okay. like, okay, well then you can start making the chords out of the G major scale. Right. Oops, not that. Well, that's that's, that's nice and hip. I wish I had those on tap. This way you could it's do on this. on the film now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I get when I improvise and I don't look at the guitar. You probably already have the tools to, to do this yourself if you have a, just a basic knowledge of some a couple scales and a couple chords, and you just start picking the notes out of them that you like, and you can create these tiny shapes. Sure. And he, he goes over that, too. Yeah, it's, using, it's uh, explained a little deeper than this. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? Okay, good. Okay, good. Next. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to leave a link below. I'll leave all of Mark's links down below as well. You guys got to check this out. Again, it's rhythm. It's all rhythm. There's well, there's a little bit of stuff There's some there. fills. But definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah. Embellishments. There you go. Good word. <laughs> Better word. So make sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We'll catch you next time. Peace.